Are those naked people? <laughs> get your things out of there, put them to your back, pay and get out. Oh, the last point. The last point is very controversial. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Giselle here. If it's your first time stopping by, hi, I am Giselle. I make videos surrounding my experiences living in Germany and I also make daily vlogs about just how my life is in Germany. So in this video, we're going to be talking about seven normal things in Germany that I found strange when I moved here. So uh, yeah, let's get right into the video. So the very first thing I'll be talking about is the fact that when you move to a new apartment, most of the time, there is no kitchen. Yeah, it might sound strange if you've never experienced this before, which is the exact same reaction I had the first time I had to move into an apartment. And this was after uni. So in uni, I always lived in a student apartment, either a shared apartment or a single apartment. No, it was actually always a shared apartment. And after uni, um, normally when you're moving into an apartment, a single space by yourself, Sometimes there is no kitchen, so there is a space for a kitchen, but there is no kitchen equipment So there is no stove, no cooker, no fridge, no working surface, no slabs, no cupboards, nothing There is, it's just an empty room or space in the corner of the, of the room So what the landlord expects you to do is, they expect you to move in and buy yourself a kitchen Usually this kitchen has to be tailored to that space, obviously, and of course, if you want to buy a tailor-made kitchen, it's going to cost extra money because the, the company that you decide to go with, they have to come in, do different measurements, you have to pay them for this service and then also pay for the kitchen. The very first apartment that I moved into, the person who was living there before me, he had bought a kitchen for the apartment. So I had to buy the kitchen over from him. So this is how it usually goes. So you, you would either take an apartment which already has a kitchen, most of the time the kitchen is the kitchen was bought by the person who was living in the space before or sometimes it is also owned by the landlord and sometimes there is no kitchen so in my in my situation i had to buy the kitchen over from the guy who was living in the apartment before and we had to go back and forth like debating the price of the kitchen and i was like what is this but it was really funny to see honestly after that experience i always tried to make sure that or i told myself that the next apartment that i move into i would make sure that they already have a kitchen because i would not want to find myself in a situation where i have to buy the kitchen myself because i know how tedious it can be and how expensive it can be so um yeah the current apartment which we live in in berlin thank goodness it had a kitchen so um yeah the kitchen is owned by the landlord so this time around we didn't have to buy it from the person who moved out of the apartment but yeah it was such a funny experience or something that i i didn't even know existed like if you're giving me a space give me a space don't give me a half space to try to fill it in by myself but yeah so the second thing we're going to be talking about is the fact that in germany it is very normal or most european countries i would say it is very normal for people or it's very normal for you to find naked beaches and i remember the first time i saw a naked beach i was like are those naked people <laughs> oh my god they're naked people! <laughs> Coming from a European country, you would not think anything of it, right? It's like, ah, oh, a naked bitch, oh my god, I'm just going to let everything hang. Let, I need to be free, I need some breeze, some air, oh my god. And I saw it, I was like, oh my god, I cannot go there. Like, I cannot, no. I could not see myself going to a naked bitch because you have to be naked. I mean, you don't have to be naked, but everybody is naked. So what is the point of you being here if you're not naked as well? Like there are other beaches which are not naked beaches. Why don't you go to those other beaches? And another place which is very normal to be completely naked is the sauna. If you go to a sauna, I've gone to a sauna once. And I remember I went into the changing room and I had on my um, swimsuit. So it was like, like a one piece swimsuit. And I was like, oh, ready to, to like go into the steaming room. And then I just saw people walking around naked, both men and women. I'm like, what is happening? And then <laughs> I was with a friend and she told me that, um, yeah, it's normal. Actually, you have to be naked in the sauna. And I was like, you have to? Yeah, that day was the first and last time that I actually went to a sauna because, yeah, I'm not there yet. Um, 
go yeah no I no <laughs> so the third uh, thing that I found very strange when I moved to Germany which was quite normal here is how fast people can drive on the highway so the highway in Germany is called the Autobahn I think Germany is the only country in the world that doesn't have um, speed limits for the highway you would think that okay no speed limits means people would drive I don't know 150 180 no you have some people sometimes going over 200 before I even had a driver's license <laughs> I was even more scared of just being in a car that was going over 200 kilometers per hour before I had a driver's license now that I have a driver's license I am a little bit more comfortable because I have also driven on the um, on the highway and I think the max I have done was 180 170 and it wasn't even for a long period of time it was a, for a very short period of time sometimes you think you're next to a plane like you're sitting and driving and they're just saying wing next to you like wing wing <laughs> Um, yeah, it's definitely a very unique experience, especially for somebody coming from Cameroon where the roads are not good. A distance that will probably take you 30 minutes in Germany, in Cameroon is probably going to take you one and a half hours. Like, so the, the road rage here is very, very serious. Oh my God. Like if you're, because usually there are like three or four lanes. If you're in the furthermost left lane, then you have to be really, really, really fast. And let's say you're driving on this lane at 150 or something, and then somebody is coming behind you, and you do not either increase your speed or move to this side of the lane or to the next lane, the guy behind you is going to be so angry. Like, um, I'm sorry, either you drive fast or you move, like just move. They take you very seriously. If you're not comfortable with driving fast on the autobahn, just respectfully take yourself to the right most lane like it's the slowest lane that's where all of the lorries are and the buses and the me as well when i started driving that was my lane you see me there like eh, looking around at other people so the next thing we're going to be talking about is the fact that there are like cigarette dispensaries coming from a country where people do not even like maybe one percent of the population smokes or maybe i just don't know people who smoke but yeah coming from a culture where people do not smoke smoking is considered very very dangerous it's also considered a form of retaliation like you're being stubborn you're being um yeah you're retaliating against something you're trying to be different that is why you smoke and then coming here to germany where it is very normal for people to smoke and not just that there are cigarette dispensaries like it's like an atm you go there you put in your money you um choose the cigarette you want the brand you want and then it comes out of the machine and i was like wow <laughs> you would never see something like this in cameroon like why people don't even smoke and for the people who do it's not something that is culturally accepted or culturally um, encouraged. No, it is very, very discouraged to smoke. Um, people don't like it when you smoke around them. They don't like the smell. Yeah, something again that I found very, very interesting that we do not even have in Cameroon, but here they have it and it is very, very normal. So the next point is the fact that most toilets have like two buttons to flush. I'm going to put a picture on the screen so that you know what I'm talking about in case you are like confused like two buttons to flush yes they have two buttons to flush one button uses less water and the other button uses a lot more water and the button that uses uh, less water is smaller than the button that uses a lot more water when I first came to Germany I remember I I finished using the bathroom and I was like which button am I supposed to use? Like, what the hell? And later on, I found out that um, the reason for the two different buttons is because they are trying to be more eco-friendly. And basically, they do not want a situation where you would have to use way more water than you need. So if you do not need to use um, a lot of water, then use the small button. If you need to use a lot of water, then use the big button. I don't think it's something that people even talk about, but I just found it strange, which is very normal in Germany. Oh, the last point. The last point is very controversial. <laughs> and it's controversial because I'm probably in like three or four different expat groups. Like I'm in a Berlin expat group, I'm in a Cologne expat group. And I have seen this particular question come up a couple of times. Is how fast the cashiers at grocery stores scan your products. 
I'm going to put a video here which I took from Facebook. It's somebody posted it on Facebook and I'm just going to put it here so that you get some kind of idea of what I'm talking about. The cashiers at grocery stores, they are usually under so much pressure when it comes to how effective and efficient their work is and usually there is no small talk it is you get to the cash register you place your stuff immediately it is your time to start um, packing your stuff into your bag the cashier would usually say hello hello and there you go it is like a race but you're just picking stuff and putting it into your grocery bag and everybody on the line is standing there and watching you it's the, the pre you're not just under pressure, like the cashier is not just under pressure, you as well are under pressure to perform as good as possible and get all this stuff into your grocery bag. It is also a cultural thing, like they grew up like this, this is what they know, this is how they have been functioning and you are not about to come here and try to slow things down, no. So yeah, when you get to the cash register, it's literally a battle. Get your things out of there, put them into your bag, pay and get out. I, I, I thought I said seven things, but um, we're going to say six things. So uh, yeah, these are the six things that I found quite, quite interesting and unusual when I moved to Germany, but they are everyday normal things here in Germany. And um, yeah, if there is any other thing that um, you have experienced, which I didn't mention, it would really be nice if you could mention in the comment section so that <laughs> I mean, it's going to be entertaining for all of us. Um, culturally, things are different in every country. So if you, if a German goes to Cameroon, they're going to probably have a list of these things as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around until the end, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'd like to see you in my next video. Ciao.